Hold on. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear you. I'm like, why is this not working? It's because it's connected to my Bose speaker. Hold on. And let me disconnect my Bose speaker. There we go. I was like, why? I was like, why am I hearing you from a distance? And it's like my, my Bose mini thing is on my kitchen counter charging. I was like, what the hell? Well, we both just had a big fart there because I was like, what's going on? Why can't I hear you? I sound like an old lady now. Oh, it's not plugged in, dear. Oh my goodness. <laughs> do you like my lighting? I do like your lighting. I can do this. I can do this. I can do that. Is that, the, is that as bright as it goes? It can go brighter. No, that's as bright as it goes. That's good. That's good. It's good. Look at you. I think, do we, I think we're, I think we're really synced this uh, evening because I think you just had something to eat quickly too, didn't you? I just had a couple pieces of chocolate and hopped out of the shower. Life is good. My jock straps on. I'm all ready to go. Awesome. We both, it's funny because we were both exercising at the exact same time. I know, totally. I'm so excited. I'm like, oh my god, I'm schwitzing. I'm clumped at the same time. Oh my god. Got a, you got a workout, baby. I got a workout baby. We're still figuring out what to call the workout baby. But I like the name Zing. Zing is cute. Can Zing you is cute. What you got. What was that? Explain what you got. I got after a year and a half of feeling deprived of not indoor cycling, teaching or taking classes, I finally invested and received my own spin bike. And so I'm going to be starting to get into enough shape that I can start recording my own spin classes and putting them up on my YouTube channel. Yay, that's so exciting. Right? Well, that's perfect, a perfect sort of little segue into our guest who will be yes. soon. Um, because it has to do with fitness. Mm -hmm. And our guest, even though he's not a fitness instructor, but it's just a really good segue because he has gotten his whole body, mind, spirit, innards, all that kind of stuff, totally healthy in the past little while. So my friend, very good friend, Matt Barrier. So Matt, Matt was my first gay bestie <laughs> from high school. So I've known, I've known Matt for a very long time. I won't tell you exactly how many years, but we've known each other for a while. Um, and he, um, he lives with type one diabetes. So he's had type one diabetes for over 30 years. We'll just wow. say that. Um, and he's very open and candid, just saying how he led, um, a pretty unhealthy lifestyle up until 2019, I think it, or just, mm. just making sure that was correct. Mm -hmm. Um, where he was just like, this is no more like, you know, having diabetes being at a t at, the, at one time he was a smoker. I don't know if he was at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, and being about 60 pounds overweight. Wow. Um, and just, you know, especially with that diabetes, like just need to, to get his, uh, life, you know, back in order, I guess, and feel healthy again. And just lost his 60 pounds, went to do a strictly keto diet okay. has been monitoring and talking about and blogging about his, you know, blood sugar levels and just his journey, um, calling himself the type one keto guy on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so I was just super stoked to see, I mean, I, I love this, this, this kind of call him a guy. I love this man anyway, but just to see how he has transformed himself is just so amazing and so inspiring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, like there's, there's a lot of things we could, uh, there's a lot of things we could talk about, but I mean, this is his new journey. He's also a school teacher. Okay. He's a music teacher um, on the North shore. So in the Vancouver area and his partner is, I believe he's still in the film industry. So he okay. is, um, a casting director, mm -hmm. I believe. So, yeah. So just like I said, known, known this guy for a very long time and yeah, his, his initiative he's doing right now, just to bring more awareness to, um, the fact that just because you, have been diagnosed with something that's really probably controlled a lot of your life. You could turn yeah. things around and get healthy. And he's, it's just, it's awesome. It's amazing that you actually have more than one gay best friend. <laughs> well, you know, no, but I mean, sorry, Matt, but though here you are my gay best friend. Oh, good thing you said that before he got on. <laughs> <laughs> okay with that. Like we just, 
not that we've had a falling out or anything like that, but we just, we're not in touch. Yeah, that's fine. Much. What's interesting though, what I want to talk to him about this is just with the, um, how old we are and when he came out and I'm not sure if he'll be comfortable, I'm sure he'll be comfortable hopefully talking about this. Um, and this is not anything personal really towards him. It's more towards me and the way I saw society and how I grew up in, I guess when I was in high school, it was like late nineties yeah. and at that having a gay friend, like he didn't, I don't remember him really coming out until grade 12, perhaps mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I remember defending him, like as if I had to defend somebody. Right. Say that he, no, he's not gay. Right. Well, because okay. so much, um, I know uh, he was made fun of and all those kinds of things that he had a girlfriend at one point. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, I recall why the fuck did, why did I think I had to defend somebody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was more just because he was, I, I didn't, he hadn't come out to me at that point. And I guess I, I just didn't want to see him made fun of. It was just horrible, but it's interesting right. around that time frame that that was, that was a mindset of like, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, you make a good point though, in terms of defending sexuality or one's identity or one's choice to live the life they want to live in yeah. a sense, you know, how much of evolutions happened in a matter of a decade, even for me from when I was, uh, selfly identified in my sexuality from such an early age even the amount of support and recognition that was there then that compared to now, 10 years later i would have killed to have what other kids and teens have now so i can only imagine generation to generation how that has continued to show up for them that way too you know totally and i like i just i just i would have defended him in any way just to make sure that he wasn't made fun of like i just felt bad i don't i don't know it's, it's very strange yeah Looking back, and it's very strange looking back because, you know, I've always been accepting of all walks of life and all humans. I mean, I grew up with when I was very little. My my uncle was gay or is gay, okay. and I grew up with that in my family. So I don't, I don't know. It's very, yeah. It is interesting. Well, it's all like all I can think of is that I would have been like seven or eight years old, and all that was happening. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, you're such an angel. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you too. I am an angel though. When I look at above me, even though our viewers can't see that my, my ring light, it literally looks like a halo. So if I put it on my head, I would actually look like an angel. Mine too. Mine too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to call you out. Were you getting distracted while I was talking? Were you like looking at the ring light? Not consciously, no. <laughs> okay. Not consciously, but it's possible that my eyes might have darted. I don't know if his eyes are going up to something. <laughs> It's so funny. I'm not online shopping, I promise. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, interesting for our viewers, though, because they know you, as we talked about learning disabilities and attention um, spans and stuff, usually when me and Rachel are recording, I'm usually fidgeting with my thinking buddy all the time. I'm usually always doing something with my hands. Mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. even know that. When I was doing this action, I was actually grabbing which party I wanted to interact with. That's what you might have saw. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like how open that you are about that. Yeah. Well, it gives the focus. It's some of that. It's like any kid that needs to be, I'm a doer. So if you have a thinking, you have a learning style of being a doer, you need to be doing something at the same time as you're paying attention. Otherwise you're just going to be lost in, lost in action. You know what? I probably need some of that putty. I remember if anybody knows what it's like to, you know, we have the nervous Nellies that are just, I mean, I know you don't drink hero, but the nervous Nellies that would just peel the labels off of beer bottles or any bottle. Mm. Them just like peeling it off and then like that's what I do all the time right like, if I have a napkin it's like it's almost in shreds mm -hmm. yeah. like I even realize I'm doing it and nope. you know I'll have it's all crunched up and then it's like completely shredded apart <laughs> you know I always used to do that on the on our furniture when I was growing up I'd always like be sitting on the couch and I would have my fingers underneath the couch and I would feel like the covering underneath the couch and I would just kind of like you know just like kind of <laughs> Poked, poked through it, you know, just kind of like right. that, you know. And then eventually when my mom would look underneath or the do cleaning, she'd think of like, who the fuck did this? <laughs> She's like, you're like, we don't have a cat in the house. What? No, no, no. So I did that. And then my brother, Zach, he would always, I don't know why he did this. He would always like literally dive bomb into the sofas and the couches. He'd like, they get a game. Like, look, I can do like a long jump. And then he would break the springs on the couches and stuff. So between the two of us, we were destructing destructing our furniture of like no one's business you you didn't need animals 
we are animals technically aren't we so we don't need more roaming around pets i was gonna say you didn't i should have said you don't need pets, pets i know we'll i know it. we're we're, we're pests and we're pesty enough so we don't need more pets yeah ab absolutely <laughs> oh there he is oh, there he is hi hello hello gorgeous how are you hello hello doing very well how are you guys? I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Rachel was just introducing you and giving you all the hype and I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this for months. Fantastic. I know me too. I've been following you guys uh, really like, 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 like microscopically, if that's a word on, 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 on not like weirdly on, um, on Instagram. It's like, I'm like, oh, you guys are awesome. Like, like, yes. like, like, <laughs> I've seen that. I'm very humbled. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's I, awesome. So, so this is so exciting. I know. I think this is like one of the first times that my voice actually went up like two octaves because normally. <laughs> <laughs> right? <sighs> hey, it's not, that wasn't like a slag to you. <laughs> no, I know. I just felt like if I have an opportunity, then, you know, perfect, you know. Okay, sure, sure. Do you know what? We just have to, we just use the gifts that we have and whatever pitch that we have. You know? I know. It's well, amazing. <laughs> and that's a segue actually into what you currently do for a living because you do use your voice because you are a music teacher, correct? Yes, yes. And it's funny, um, the, the <laughs> I, I do, I know I do everything that I shouldn't <laughs> when I'm teaching and it's ruined my voice. I've lost, like, I can't sing as high as I used to be able to, like, Really? I literally have no falsetto anymore. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. What, what do you do that you're not supposed to do? Now I'm really curious. Oh, like just pitching my voice higher than I should and not using my head voice, using my chest voice and just speaking over groups of <laughs> large groups of people. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, you know, I catch myself and I'm like, I'll just wait. Yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. I don't know how to do that yet. I, I interrupt everybody and mostly. <laughs> You're getting better. A, a, a bit. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. It's funny because Zoom, um, like what happens is that if you are talking over somebody else or trying to chime in, Zoom doesn't pick up on that voice. It's only picking up on the voice that's speaking at the time. So you'll see mm. a lot of the time it's like, I, I look like this. And then <laughs> which is kind of embarrassing now that I look back at some of the episodes. But anyway, um, Matt, it is so unbelievably awesome to see you. You look fabulous. Like, Thank you. Fabulous. I was looking at your website and just because you're very open and candid and raw and all those things that we love, um, you know, about on your about section, just showing that before and after or before and current, I should uh. say. I, I can't even believe, like, because I haven't seen you in so long. I know, I know. Crazy. So, I mean, I was doing a little introduction prior to you hopping on. If you want to, what we do is we do ask our guests to kind of, you know, give their own little intro. I know you don't know what I said. <laughs> but <laughs> it's all good stuff. But basically, um, you know, that your, your new initiative now is just to bring awareness to health and wellness for specifically those um, in the diabetes community. Um, you have type one diabetes, you have had it for, I, I didn't want to really age ourselves necessarily. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, want, I wanted to put just like, like, like a numeric sign and the four so that no one knew the decade, but you know, <laughs> we have to also own it. We, we have to own it, right? We have to. So, yes. so 34 years, 34 years I've had it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so, um, and with that being said, like you've basically, it sounds like you're just like, and we can swear on this podcast. You were kind of just like, well, fuck this a few years ago. Like I'm turning my life around doing, quitting all the things that I'm, you know, not good for my body and, you know, trying to live a healthier lifestyle, and then you became pretty much 100% keto too, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, on and off. I, it certainly had its, you know, at, at first it's because I'm, a, I don't want to call myself a foodie, but I love food, mm -hmm. which is what got me into trouble in the first place. Many, 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 many layers of, 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 of things that happened. But uh, 
um, uh, the real the real catalyst for the change though was my I, I started getting some really real complications with the diabetes, like the stuff that the stuff that we are all told at the very beginning, like if you don't take good care of yourself, you'll go blind, you'll lose mm-hmm. your leg, you'll lo- it's like and like sure as shit. <laughs> Oh, my first podcast square. Um, my, uh, <laughs> I'm such a prude. That'll be the only one. I'm like blushing. <laughs> oh, it's going to continue happening once it's out. It's like a dog oh. barking. When a dog barks, it keeps barking. Oh, no. It's like my elementary school teacher come, kicks it. I'm like, oh, fudge. Oh, oh. anyway, whatever. Um, so back to my story. It, uh, yeah. So I, 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 I had already started developing what's called uh, diabetic retinopathy, which is uh, nerve damage around the periphery of your retina. And it, uh, it's blood vessels, blood vessels enlarge and they can start leaking and blah, blah, blah. It's all very, you know, it is, it, it's, it's something that comes with having diabetes for a long time. And, you know, I've, I've managed it pretty well over my life, like overall pretty well, but you know, every person as they come into their selves, um, as they grow up, goes through these different stages. And I had my rebellious stage and I had my, you know, I can do anything anybody else does stage. And, uh, and I still feel that way. I still can do anything anybody else does. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had some times when it, the, when the, the management wasn't absolutely spot on. And so it started developing in my 20s. Um, but it was mild and we just monitored it. And then anyway, as, as I started university for when I went back as a mature student uh, to do the music degree, uh, I became very sedentary. So it was like, you know, practice room for four hours a night, homework, then uh, working on the weekends uh, in a restaurant because where else do you work in evenings and weekends, right? When you're in school and then they give you free food and you know what the free food is right fries <laughs> and, and all that you know um all the all that all, all all the mixing of the fats and the carbohydrates all that deliciousness that we all love oh my goodness and so plus i worked at a good restaurant and the food was great and so anyway it all just this perfect storm it was sort of just like years upon years of 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 shifted priorities shall we say where where i i i I kept myself alive and I kept myself plugging away because it's just my, I've had it so long that I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, it, it's just, it's just, it, it, it's life for me. You know, life is just like, I take insulin every time I eat, you know, it's the first thing I do when I wake up, I just test, take my insulin and then I get my coffee or, and then brush my teeth, whatever, you know, it's just a part of the routine, but um, I hadn't made it a priority until I realized it was almost too late. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I, uh, I suddenly one day I just woke up and like my vision was completely warped in my right eye. It was like, it was like, it was like I'd fallen down um, the whole Alice in Wonderland and everything was just like, like acid trip. And it was like literally like, people's heads were this big and their bodies were like this. It was like super distorted. And I was like, okay, this is, this is not, this is not normal. So, uh, so. Was I drugged? Like. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and so went to the, went to the, went to the um, emergency, like the eyes of the eye center. And uh, yeah, I got diagnosed with, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, macular edema, which is, uh, basically these, it's like swelling in, in, in the re- where the retina swells, which is what caused the distortion. And, uh, so that then I got given my first, um, eye needle, which I had to go back for every month until, and this picture is on my, is on my, uh, it's on my, 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 my first blog post, if anyone's interested. Um, I, I right now, cause I'm okay. Go ahead. Yes. That's yeah. I, uh, I was one, that was one of the one in, in 3000 people that gets an infection oh. and the infection 
Yeah, because there, there's like little microbes on the like tips of the needles, right? So the needle goes in, um, which, you know, isn't lovely. It's not as bad as, as you think, like, but um, it's, yeah, it was, uh, that was the one of the most horrendous experiences of my life because mm. they had to, they told me that there was a 70% chance of me losing my vision and a 50% chance of me losing my eye. Oh my God. Uh-huh. I know, I know. And so, so it was like, okay, all right, well, what do we have to do so that that doesn't happen? Okay, well, we treat it with this. And it's like, the pain was unbelievable. I couldn't even look at light through the other eye because the nerves are connected. It was just like, it was, it was so awful. And um, they injected this super powerful um, antibiotic into my, into my retina with this like horse needle. And that was like, it was just, it was so painful. And uh, I couldn't see out of it for the next week. Yeah. And then I was, but, but, but I'm a, I'm a pretty positive person. I'm, I'm a really positive person. So I heard the 30% part of it. And I was like, okay, well, we're just going to be the 30% then. Mm-hmm. And so, so I, I mean, I don't, I do believe, I, I, I believe that the mind is really, really powerful. And um, so whether or not I willed my vision back, you know, we'll, no one will, will never know, but I, I certainly wasn't going to accept, unless I had to, of course, if it didn't come back, I would have accepted it. But um, I focused on the positive and it came back and I had to keep going. I went in every day for a checkup. I had my needles, blah, 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 blah. And then that was in October of 2016. And so by January of 2017 was when I was like, okay, I need to make some big changes. Right. Yeah. At that point, how far along were you in your school? Were you, you were still in school, I'm assuming. <gasps> yes, I was uh, just doing my teaching practicum. Okay. So okay. I was starting my teaching practicum that, that, that January. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. so was it like, did you at that point... Um, not not get help but was there a support you were just like how or what kicked you how did you start <laughs> I guess <it's> the- <laughs> you know I, I've been asked this before I don't remember how I don't remember how I first heard about keto I, I like I, I can't in point what that was but however it was I heard about it I thought okay well that sounds interesting so I I looked into it and you know I I, I was gonna grieve the loss of carbohydrates, but I sort of, I, I'm, I'm, cause you know, I love all that stuff and, but I find ways to kind of scratch the itch if I needed to. And at the beginning, you know, there's lots of different versions of keto. And I, I, I definitely, I definitely did the cheat days and I would reward myself with, with, um, cheat meals and, um, you know, which in retrospect, I needed to do because I, I wouldn't, I don't think I, well, I wouldn't, I, I did go back. I did fall off the wagon. So I, I think this really, really strict approach wouldn't have served me at that stage, but I had enough success with it that I was like, okay, so there is something to this and it, it does work. Um, I just need to wrap my head around the th- th- grieving, the loss of the, of, of, of the, the foods that I love. Mm-hmm. And, um, but the other, but, but, but by giving myself those rewards, I was actually just, I was, I was, um, oh, I don't know what's, what's the word I'm looking for. Just like reinforcing food addiction, you know, where like not really, not really addressing the, the, the problem at a source. It was like denial and then reward, which just reinforces it. Right. Right. Yeah. With what I was, with what, I mean, I wasn't like, you have to keep in mind it was, I was, I was practicing really unhealthy eating habits, like, like, like for a diabetic, my gosh, like crush, crushing a whole thing of ice cream after dinner, sitting, watching a movie, you know, like that kind of yeah. thing. That's how, that's like, I really want to make it clear. I don't like, I don't judge anybody on their eating habits or, or 
like the no shame. Like I really, really hope I, I try and be so careful about, I never want to shame anybody for their choices or mm-hmm. um, there's no, there's no one protocol that's, that there's, there's no one size fits all for anybody, you know? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So I try and be really careful not to sound preachy, like keto is the only way. Cause it isn't, it isn't. Well, we, sorry. I was going to ask you because there, you kind of just probably answered my question, but there are so many choices out there for quote unquote healthy living, whether it's, whether you have diabetes, whether you don't, uh, whether it's going to help somebody who has anxiety or depression or like, I mean, there's, mm-hmm. there's so many and yes, every body is entirely different from someone else's body. So yeah. So thank you for saying that. I mean, that's why I was wondering why keto and that's just interesting. Mm-hmm. And it's also interesting to me that it sounds like you've kept with the, the keto thing is so, somehow just you started on one thing and that one thing happened to work. So that's kind of lucky too, right? Like you did an experiment as much with other things or? I did leading up to it. So the keto thing has been four years, but there was like carb, there was like, de- like eating in a, in, in a like, like calorie deficit before that. And there was the, like the, the low fat, you know, like, like, like the complete opposite of keto was like the low fat and only, only great, like clean grains, you know, like I, I did that, like just like brown rice and right. chicken, <laughs> you know, you know? Yeah. Uh, so no, I, so I certainly had been, cause I had always been pretty active in the lead up to this. So I wasn't, I, I, I was, you know, I, like, I, I was, uh, I ran a half marathon in 2010. I like, wow. I was, I played soccer. I did like, I was, I was pretty active. And so when I, sort of four years into my degree, when I was winded walking up a flight of stairs, I was like, I like, this is just not who I feel I am. I just like, I need to make a change. And so I did try, but then, you know, exams and oh. things to play. And then it's like, oh yeah, okay. I'm just gonna like go to get fast food in between like, cause it's just mm-hmm. like what you do when <laughs> you go to university. Right. Right. So, do you- right, so. Do you feel like, because you've had, you know, type one for so long, um, that growing up, like youth today who are dealing with this and they have type one diabetes, do you feel like they have more resources now than you had? It was, I mean, I feel like that's almost with everything. <laughs> um, but I just, something that I remember, actually kind of a funny story is I remember Matt, when we were in grade 12, and I recall there was something called the grad guy kidnapping. <laughs> what, what would happen is um, at our high school. I remember it too. Yeah. In our high school, there's a thing. Um, I might've been with a few different high schools, but there's a thing where on a particular morning when we, we, I think it was the first like few months of starting grade 12 and all the girls got together and we would decide which boys that each group of girls was going to go and basically like basically break, not break in, but the parents knew go into the guy's houses in the like super, it was like three in the morning, four in the morning yeah, uh, or, something. or something like that um, with like duct tape and like rope and like a lot of shit. The whole point, I don't know what the point is. It's just stupid. But anyway, we go in and we kidnapped the boys from their beds. They had no idea we were coming in, but the parents just, they would like leave the doors unlocked and stuff like that. But with Matt, cause he's part of our team that we had to grab him. I recall your mom was so freaked out because she was like, make sure Matt has his insulin. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that, but it was like a big thing. Like, do you remember that? Uh, I don't remember that part specifically. But I do remember being like rudely awoken and stolen from my slumber and like screaming and tying up. Yeah, no, I do. It was kind of, I had blocked it, but it's all coming flooding back now. <laughs> no, what is no, wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> they had coffee for us at the other end. I remember there was like treats and donuts or something. But at the very yeah. least. I know, right? Yeah, I think my point is that I I didn't really know a lot about diabetes. And so when mm-hmm. we went and in and your mom, I remembered her distinctly saying, make sure he has his insulin. And you were, mm-hmm. you know, she was freaked out that, you know, you would go somewhere and not, I don't really know what my point is to that story, but it was more just like, um, it was- it Your was first experience with it, right? Pretty much. And just kind of an yeah. aching for myself being like, wow, this is a, this is a thing that, that is, it's your life. That is, mm-hmm. that's- and Yeah. Like what, oh yeah. It's- 
you know, I can't imagine, um, like I know someone who has a little one who has type one diabetes diagnosed not mm. that long ago, and he's probably eight or nine now, but you know, just, I'm hoping that the resources are better these days when it comes to that kind of stuff. They certainly are They're Like the insulin is way better. Um, like back then the, you had to plan your meals around your insulin because the insulin just, that's just how it functioned. There wasn't, it is just there. Now there's all these different types that work really quickly. Uh, so you can fit your insulin around your food now. So you can sort of oh. lead, you can be more impulsive, I suppose, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, I want that piece of cake. Okay. So I'll take that, have that piece of cake and I'll take my, five units of, of insulin and then you know that's that so like a diabetic person now can they can eat whatever they want um whereas mm. back then in the 80s and the 90s um 90s was better than the 80s for sure but the the insulins were longer acting so you took them you just took a shot in the morning um by high school i was on a fast tracking insulin but in elementary school it was like morning and evening you just took your insulin and you had to plan your meals according to the insulin level. So it, it, like, it didn't account for, that's why you had all these big, up, these big swings, ups and downs, and getting it just right was tricky. Uh, yeah. But to answer your question, uh, Rachel, yes, I think that the, uh, the new generation has so much to help them have better control from quite early on. You know, they've got insulin pumps which uh, is, you know, it's where I don't, I don't personally wear one, but they, you know, the insulin, it just, it's like drips in the background, like it acts like a pancreas, you program it to act like a pancreas. So there are those, there's, there's the CGMs, you know, the, uh, where, where you, where you guys get to see all of my, all of my little, my graphs that I post, that's, that's all generated from the, from the uh, continuous glucose monitor. So all, all of these tools are, at our fingertips, out at our disposal to really, to really help maximize control and to lead a normal life. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. Now, because yeah. you kind of mentioned high school, I kind of, why don't we go, why don't we go back a little bit? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but more so, I think um, for you, I mean, we kind of already touched on how, you know, it's, it seems like there's just more, uh, there's just what am I trying to say? Better medical equipment and things like that. And kidnapping um, each other. And ki- yes. But how, for you growing up with type one diabetes, how did you, did you feel different than other kids? Like, was it something that really affected you in elementary school? Was it, I was I'm just, if you don't mind talking about that. I'm no, sure. not at all. How it um, formed you in, in that. It situation. did. You know, I was always that kid. I was the kid whose mom went on all of the field trips and went to, like my mom went to outdoor school with us. My mom went to like our grade seven excursion. I think the first one she didn't go on was the grade nine choir trip, band and choir. I think that might've been the first one. Or maybe she went on that one and she didn't go on the senior one. I think maybe that's what it was. But anyway, it was like mortifying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Know, mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, I was always the kid whose mom was hanging around and, and, uh, my mom was always really friendly with everyone. So she wasn't, she, she was quite present. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, when you're 12, that's a problem. Um, but, uh, other than that, I mean, like, I don't recall ever being bullied for it. I was bullied for lots of other stuff, but uh, (laughs) not the diabetes. I I don't remember it ever being too, too big of a deal. Um, uh, I do remember, oh my gosh, I just had this this flashback. I remember I got called by the principal to discuss something that was in my locker uh, because there was a really bad this is embarrassing. It was a really bad smell or something. And uh, they had to open it up and all of my needles were everywhere. And he wanted to like, like, how could you think that I was doing heroin? Like, it's like so ignorant, but, but there were needles in there. And so I got called, I got called down by the principal to talk about my locker and it was about the needles. Wow. (laughs) I was like, I'm diabetic. (laughs) Did he, was the principal embarrassed after, after? Yeah. Yeah. 
I think so. I, you know, as you know, this is Jesus. too long ago to actually name a number, but uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say that number because it's terrifying. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, oh, I know, I know this. This one to my here. Are you there? This no, this no. Way. There you go. To over yeah. here, he is about a decade younger than us. So <laughs> oh, sure, oh. it doesn't feel like it. No, he, no, for sure. And you're like, Hero, you're such a, I mean, an old soul. I don't mean that in a negative way. No. <laughs> um, but. Oh, you guys are hilarious. I've been taking a lot of the spotlight asking questions, but Hero, is there something that you'd like to. I'm really just enjoying hearing the two of you catch up. Truly really nice. Um, well, but the thoughts that I had about your story and what you've been through and things like that is how does it look today? You kind of talked about how it looks today and kind of how it was in the past, but what does the impact of your lifestyle and the work that you were doing to be an advocate for what you live with, how is that, how has that affected your community around you and what you do for other people? Good question. Um, you know what? It is amazing how, coming out of the shadows has been so liberating and I have just felt such a connection to the community that I never felt before. You know, I just mm -hmm. always just lived it lived in the shadows sounds a little dramatic, but I just, I, I, I just, I never let it define who I was. I, it just, it just was a part of me for sure. But I was all of these other things that um, defined me, but sort of, coming out, if you will, as a, yeah. as a, as a type one diabetic on like online and becoming active in the community and an advocate for health and um, just vitality, you know, just, just, just living in a way that will extend your life and just have you live the best way that you can. Yeah. Um, it has been, it has been amazing. I, I had no idea how much I, mm what was missing in my life until I actually did this, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't, that's probably the biggest takeaway for me is that this change that I've made has opened me up to a world of possibility and connections and, um, and yeah, just connections. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's, That's awesome. Great. That is That's awesome. great. So like, have you been bringing it into, uh, have you kind of like left it as an online thing or now because being in the school system, have you brought more awareness to your students or has that been a thing like bringing it? I've never, oh, I've always been really open with my students. Uh, you know, especially when I've taught, I've taught health before and I give use myself as a, as a, as a case study, but um, I, I, I'm planning to, I've already, put myself out there with the, I'm like pointing in the direction of the diabetes center in West Van. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. Once, once we can meet in person again, I'm, I'm hoping to put yeah. together some in-person meets, you know, whether they're weekly or monthly, I want to have some walking groups, some hiking groups and just support, um, mm -hmm. people just getting out. Cause it can be really, especially for newly diagnosed people, um, the the anxiety that comes from getting a hypo getting low blood sugar because it like well it is your body shutting it's your body absolutely freaking out because your brain doesn't have enough fuel so it's going feed me or i'm going to shut down and mm -hmm. like it shuts down believe me i've had like i don't know five seizures over my lifetime um so it's it, it like diabetic anxiety is super real. And, um, and so for newly diagnosed or even people that don't know how to manage exercise properly, it can be really, really overwhelming because, and, and, and terrifying, you know, like the thought of hiking up a mountain, I mean, oh my gosh, I'm going to get low blood sugar and I'm going to die. Like who's going to save me on a mountain? You know, it's just, so I, I'd love to, I plan to, it's, as soon as I can. Um, I was actually thinking of, um, contacting them sort of soon uh, to see if there's anyone in their clinic now uh, starting on the North shore, but I'm going to probably, I'll probably start some lower mainland 
uh, groups as well on Facebook okay. and That's not really an Instagram thing, probably more of a Facebook thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And in terms of your connection to the community and being part of the LGBTQ plus community as well, have you noticed any sub communities within those with that with regards to uh, diabetes or other forms of similar related illnesses? Or have you combined them at all? No, I haven't. I haven't. And I haven't seen that. Uh, I haven't seen that connection yet. I actually I do know a few other gay diabetics, but uh, one's in Toronto now. Yeah. And actually, I think he's the only one I know. Could be an interesting niche for you, given the fact yeah, that how, totally. how image and uh, media or the pressure of the gay male suggestion goes around and diet and exercise and fitness and basically pulverizing ourselves if you like that we are accepted by our society when it's nothing like that at all. You can only imagine with other health effects or... Um, um, hereditary or onset um, health concerns that in the gay community, it would definitely amplify that too. Yeah, or like, and how do you feel attractive if you've got like tubing coming out of your, yeah. you know, like how are you? I just listened to a podcast um, about intimacy with uh, um, for type one diabetics, and it's like right. I've never had, worn a pump, so I don't feel I don't have the same the same. It's not the same case for me. Yeah. But, you know, you know, like bits could fall off things, you know, like, it's just, how do you feel? I like, it's just like, you feel sort of like a robot almost. And, right. and, you know, and so I can imagine anyway, coming back to you, coming back to your question, Hiro, I can, I can totally see that that could be quite a, quite a, quite, quite a, quite a thing mm-hmm. um, for anyone, but in, but in, in, in any community who's, diabetic and intimate but uh and, but for 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 the lgbtq plus community for sure you know where you know and I, and then in that regard um with co- coming to like relationships and stuff like that did it ever affect how you saw yourself or in you know when it comes to relationships or connecting with other people other men like i don't know did it ever kind of mm-hmm. um I was never ashamed of it. Okay. It was definitely something that I would, I bring it up fairly early, you know, like I would like chuck my, <laughs> this is my phone, but not my insulin, but I'd like to throw it, throw it down on the table and be like, oh, that's my insulin, <laughs> you know? And then I'd answer questions and probably clear up a lot of ignorance which isn't anyone's fault, but, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, is, did you get it because you ate too much sugar? No, <laughs> no, no. Oh, so you can't eat sugar. No. <laughs> so it's it definitely a good conversation starter. Um, so whether or not it's first date material, probably not, but probably second or third. Um, oh. Unless, of course, like it was a walking date and I got a little blood sugar and was like, um, I need to stop <laughs> right now. We need to sit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I'm going to pass out. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, sorry. Go ahead, please. Well, no, I, well, I was just going to say, cause Rachel mentioned you have a husband, correct? Yes. I've got a long term partner. Yeah. So how, so not, we're not married, but sure. But in terms of your partner and in terms of meeting them or whatever pronoun they go by, what, meeting mm-hmm. them or him, um, how did they connect with you? How did you connect with each other? And did that come up at all? Or was it just second nature? You know, okay, cool. Doesn't oh, yeah, it was never, it was never a big deal. Yeah, no, no, right. no, it was, it was fine. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of, it just, it would, it would have come up really early and our first date was a walk. So I, I don't remember if I got a hypo on the walk, but, uh, the <laughs> date went, the date went well, so. Here we are. <laughs> so Rachel's going to love this question. Did you grow up in Lolo as well? Oh. No, I didn't. No, no, no. Lynn Valley. Lynn Valley. Aww. Lynn Valley is so sweet. I love Lynn Valley. Yeah. I used to teach there all the time. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. At the, mm-hmm. at the Iwa Yoga there. Yeah, for many, yeah. quite a few years for sure. Nice, nice. Oh, yes. I just love those 13-hour days and making only $13 an hour when you multiply by 10 hours a day. It was great. Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway, so my point being about you living in the North Shore and Rachel asking you about, well, Rachel, 
doing the very best she could, the, having her schmeckle amount of rum or whiskey or I do not know alcohol whatsoever. So whatever your spot. I, I, to oh, be, I should have. To be quite honest, I've been drinking kombucha until this very second where I'm like, I've just put my foot in my mouth about a million times and I'm just going to have a sip of whiskey now. So fuck. <laughs> I, I hope love you, it. I, ho I hope you washed it first and it had a pedicure. Uh, no. But anyway, anyway, you know what? We ramble. This is us. This is truly authentic getting juicy. But as mm -hmm. far as, as but that, to add on to Rachel's observation, in terms of growing up in the North Shore, growing up in the LGBT community, growing up as a man, whatever, and again, a decade or so in a different time, which is not that long ago, but long enough for that part of our lifestyles, you know, what, and you said it was a lot harder. What were some of the things that came up for you that you can think, okay, here are three things that I immediately, bam, 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 come to mind and you're thinking, I knew that this affected me a certain way, or I knew that this is how I associated with society mm -hmm. in a way that maybe wasn't the, the way that others might, from your perspective, from this point of sexuality. Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, it feels so long ago, but I just remember in elementary school, uh, just like knowing then, but saying to myself like oh i just i will do anything i can to be normal to like not have to be this way um so that would have like yeah there wasn't anything in pop culture at that point that 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 even that even validated the existence like it was all parody if, it, if there was anything it was parody and it was probably like a gay bash in a movie like you know like there was there was there was nothing there was uh you know this is before um will and grace yeah um right uh this before is before before, before, before queers folk. folk yeah that was high school that came out in high school so yeah um so elementary school it was like oh no 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 i'm different i'm weird this is wrong yeah, I have to cover this up. Yeah, so <laughs> I tried to cover it up. <laughs> I don't think I did that good of a job. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because uh, because you know, grade eight girls are the Fucking worst. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sneaked out a little f bomb. Oh, uh, oh, Matt, we could have a whole. Oh my gosh. Code on. And Oh, uh, grade eight and grade nine girls. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. We're going to totally have a last tip about this. I just know it. And on one particular person, we could have a whole episode on her. Anyway. We will not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I so look forward to this. <laughs> no. Unless we have a complete code name that we, uh, we've talked off air. We know who exactly who we're talking about. Because there I, were a couple. <laughs> I know who you're talking about. You know I'm talking about because. I know who you're talking about. I know several. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm not afraid. Just the year years later, and just the st I I'm not going to say the name, but just the story about I think what Matt told me about uh, being downtown somewhere and running into her and like actually having a bit of a confrontation with her while you were a bit intoxicated. And I think that's the same person, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. I so love this right now. You have no idea. Yeah. Laughing at the expense of others without me being responsible. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. anyway yeah so continue. so oh sorry continue i'm sorry continue. um anyway so you know there was definitely bullying that went on in grade eight yeah um but by grade nine i found this amazing group of friends <laughs> and that rachel that rachel was right in the middle of was pivotal oh. she was one of the one of the one of the gems and yeah, I didn't, I didn't come out to you guys immediately, but I did come out. Um, I came out to a couple of people in grade nine and then, and then by grade 10, I think it was fully public. And I was the only person in our high school who was out. I know. So like all grades, I was the only person um, and, you, um, I just can't believe what has changed over the past <laughs> several years, um, two decades, I'm just going to say, it. oh my God. Um, I can't believe what's, uh, how, how it's changed. You know, I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, I mean, there are so many amazing TV shows now, but like, 
like the 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 lead character in have you seen generation no no it is so good i think it's on hbo but he is just so comfortable in his own skin and Mm. is a high school student senior but i mean still it's just it's so amazing it is so amazing Mm. and even i've just like seen how kids i guess it's since like the people that are sort of our age and a bit older have been bringing up families with a different um, set of values, you know, um, it's just, you really see it reflected in the kids. Yeah. There is still a kind of um, negative terminology thrown around a little bit, but you know, boys are allowed to be affectionate with each other now. And I think that's wonderful. You know, you see yeah. friends like, like arm in arm and hugging, like, like, elementary school age kids hugging like it just it's so great because like when I was in elementary school that was the last it was like Mm -hmm. punch your friend you know it was just Mm -hmm. totally different and so it's 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 I I don't know if I've answered your question Rachel I kind of don't even really remember or I don't remember what I was answering but (laughs) (laughs) there wasn't really a quest there wasn't really a question Matt it was just blathering and um just for, for the first time, really, in all of our episodes, really losing my train of thought. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. but that is fascinating that what you say about being the only out person in our high school until I, I was. I was, too, in my high school. Really? Because then yeah. a number of people came out right after high school. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, yeah, well, I, it's... I, I'm going to spin it and just say you were a trailblazer. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Fuck you, Chevy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right, right. But there are- and, poor, and poor Sheila. I- <laughs> poor Sheila, I know. Well, you know what? We can, we, we can reincarcerate, not, sorry, we could not incarcerate, <laughs> we can reincarnate Sheila as one of my llamas. <laughs> sure. Poor Sheila. And, and here, and, and she can still talk. I love it. Uh, I'm sorry, Sheila. You turned into I've a seen, I've lava. seen I've seen Sheila since, and we're we're good. Okay, that's good. Awesome, yeah. that's awesome, good. awesome. Well, Sheila, if you're listening to this, how dare you? But I'm glad that you're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's actually funny because I think that there's a lot of girls in high school back at that time that um, were a lot of uh, maybe gay men's first kisses and things like that. That didn't realize i think i was actually oh yeah someone. really yeah oh yeah oh my god i'm actually like 99 percent sure all the men <laughs> that my mom felt was dating or in love with in high school or early university they either became rabbis or they be- or they came out all uh, four of them i think hmm okay yep. hmm. i know <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and there's certain <laughs> certain areas of um, life where it's still very difficult. Like we're, tomorrow morning, we're actually speaking to um, mm. a gentleman named Brock McGillis. And Brock was one of the very first out um, a, a semi-pro um, hockey players. Um, mm. Yeah. So that's something um, still in, in the sports world that is mm-hmm. not, it's still not totally acceptable, specifically mm-hmm. with men's sports, very yeah. men's sports. Yeah. Um, I think now he's working with the Toronto Maple Leafs um, with just talking about um, harassment and, you know, how mm-hmm. we can get, get around all this and be comfortable. Mm. It's and so big. It's, I can only imagine yeah. what goes on in the, yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But um, yeah, I'm super happy for you and that you've been able to feel healthy and you look like a different version of yourself, a beautiful version of yourself. And it's just it's so nice to see Matt. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and yeah, just, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't really know what to say other than thank you. <laughs> so. Just say thank you. Yeah. But so I guess I know you just started your blog. Mm. And I'm going to make sure at the end of the show notes, we've got all that kind of stuff in the show notes so that people can follow you and all those kinds of things. But um, what, I guess, just as we kind of start to 
close things here. Are there any, is there anything that you really want the public, your public, our public to know about, or is there anything that we didn't really touch on that, you know, might be important for people to know? Oh, about you, it can be about diabetes in general. I mean, and this is something that's fairly pretty naive with a lot of people. I think, I think people still don't know what you were saying. What is the difference between type one and type two? Mm-hmm. And such a, you know, novice question. And we're having it at the end of this conversation, but maybe just quickly, you know, bring some light to that for people that really still don't know what it is. The difference between type one and two difference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, type one is, an autoimmune disease. Uh, it's it's uh, the body. Well, the, the 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 beta cells that make insulin are attacked, and so for whatever reason, hereditary. We don't quite know. I mean, I'm sure it's there are some environmental factors, um, yeah. but it's definitely more of a. They think it's hereditary, um, and it yeah. So it so it shuts down the beta cells that make insulin. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight. It can be, it can be sort of like they can kick in and they can come out and kick in, but then eventually they will stop uh, yeah. working, which is why um, we type one diabetics have to take insulin. We're insulin dependent um, because insulin is a very important hormone <laughs> that um, it's, it has many jobs, but the main one is to transport um, glucose to the cells for, for, for energy. So, um, without it, we wither away and die. Yeah. And that is literally what would happen. Um, so a type, yeah. So type one is often, often onset earlier in life. So usually people get it, you know, as children, teenagers, um, you know, but you can get it up into your thirties, forties. I mean, it can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, I didn't know that I actually didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't know. I actually thought it was more something you were almost born with. Yeah. I thought it was hereditary. I didn't know that. Yeah, it, it is. It is hereditary, but it, but, but it, but it's usually, they don't really know what's, what, what, what the environmental factors are that get it, that kick it in. Like they think I got mine because I had an infection, uh, like, uh, like, a what was it? It was like roseoli. I don't quite know what roseoli is, but it was like, uh, like kind of like, a I don't know, an infection of some sort. Okay. Um, when I was, when I was two and a half or three. And so they think that that, okay. Like got that, that's why my body went, had that reaction. So, mm-hmm. uh, so that's type one. Um, it can be managed with insulin. Um, and then type two is typically, uh, no, I don't want to just say that it, cause it isn't just lifestyle, but it is more, cause it can be developed in, it can be developed in, in, in thin people, overweight people, it can be developed mm-hmm. in, in anybody, but it typically is developed by um, an overactive, like your, like, uh, like your, your pancreas has to work in overtime to process all of the food and all of the carbohydrate that's being eaten uh, right. and consumed. So, uh, and there's a lot of insulin resistance that gets built up. And that's actually the key is that, is that the, the more tax the more taxing uh, you do to your, or the more, yeah, the, the, the more taxing uh, digestion is to your, to your pancreas, the harder it has to work. And then it takes more insulin to get the job done. And it's just this, it's just this never ending cycle. And then, so that's how you sort of become pre-diabetic and then uh, type two diabetes uh, will, will, will come in when, when the, the uh, insulin levels are really high as is also um, blood glucose because it's not, it's not being very efficient. Right. So, so it, the, 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 the pancreas can still sort of function with, with uh, type two diabetes. It can be managed with diet, which is why, which is why um, things like uh, the Dr. Bernstein, although I think he's actually also type one, but the, um, I don't know that for sure. So don't quote me. Um, you know, the low carb diet was first introduced for type two diabetes, mm. uh, to help manage it, just to give the pancreas a bit of a break, a rest. Um, but if it's, if it isn't managed properly with diet, then 
there are medications that can be taken and then eventually it, it may turn into type one because, right. because, um, it, uh, so it, it's, 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 it's honestly, it's, it's almost more of a metabolic, um, condition okay. almost. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hero, any other last questions? Uh, the only question I really have to ask for you is what would you, again, it sounds very cliche, but what would you ask for people that are just starting their journey of understanding this is what their lifestyle has become or what it's going to be evolved into? Like, what are the few things that you would recommend or suggest to these, to these individuals that question. might not know how to process what they're being told? You need to be your own advocate. You need to advocate for yourself. Um, really, don't be afraid. Uh, it's it, perfectly possible to have a, a wonderful life that's full of all of the same things that everyone else gets to enjoy, like travel. Um, you know, you can even fly a commercial plane now mm. with as a type one diabetic. So right. I, I, maybe not astronaut but I don't know, but really I, there isn't much that we can't do. And if you get, get involved in the community and follow people that are active in the community and be inspired by them because they're doing amazing things. Like, like Instagram is such a gift to, to see what people are doing and the, um, and the uh, adverse adversary, ad, what's the word I'm looking for? The, um, the advocacy. No, 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 no. D diversity? No, no. <laughs> Can we edit this out, please? Uh, the, uh, the hard stuff, getting over the hard stuff. There's a word, and I can't think of what it is. Oh, um, the triumph? Adversary. No. Adversary? Is that the word? Adversity. Adverse, yeah. No, adversity. <laughs> yeah. Or the I've, resilience? Res yeah, yeah, exactly. Can I buy a vowel? It, it Thank is, you. I would love to buy a vowel. And one's opponent in a contest, conflict, or dispute. Isn't so, that adversary? That's, right. That's adversary. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you are the wicked like, Goodbye. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that's what you meant to say then. Adversary. 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 No, I meant... Adversity. No, it, <laughs> oh, I swear I am a teacher. Oh gosh, but not in English. Anyway, no. Um, the, the, watching what people have accomplished with what uh, being dealt a whole slew of different cards, like oh my goodness, there's this one guy. I, um, I won't name him. I, I don't know. He's, he's not a he's, he, well. I don't see why not. His name's Brandon. And he's, he had, uh, I heard his story on a podcast that he had what's called brittle uh, diabetes, which was like, where it's like, nothing you can do will bring your blood sugar up. Like, crazy. I was so blown away by his story. And, you know, he ended up getting, uh, having, a, I think, I think he's got a, a, a pancreas transplant atta wow. like attached to his pancreas and it's the only thing that's worked and like he is amazing and so to anyone out there who's just le learning the ropes and feeling overwhelmed like get online join the communities um reach out to people um people like it's it's such an open welcoming community um non-judgmental um that, that that people have there are everyone's been through it and, and, and really, really can empathize with, with what you've been through, what they've been through. So, um, and take their experience and adapt it to your own life and, and educate, educate yourself too, because um, it's, I, I'm sure it's a lot better, but there is so much that I didn't know so much that I didn't know. That's one of the main reasons that I wanted to start the blog. You know, I just, I, 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 I've sort of, there are all these things that I want to learn about. And I was like, well, why don't I sort of almost treat it like a research project, but okay. then share it like 
like share the fruits of my time. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I'm, a, I'm not a scientist. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, none of, none of it is, I'm not running any, any, you know, I'm just reading other people's other, other, other people's research and, and piecing it all together and just sharing what I've learned. So if I get it something wrong, I'm totally open to being, to being <laughs> challenged or, you, you know, but um, anyway, that's so, so yeah, back to the question, mm-hmm. get online, get into the community seek the supports you need and educate yourself because um, it, there are holes in the, in, in, in the education that we receive. Cause, and it's also so overwhelming at the beginning, like giving, telling, telling somebody who's just been diagnosed that there are 47 different known factors that it will affect your blood sugar levels. Like just, what? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm still trying to manage how to like manage stress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and- like, you know, and it's like, that's like the fourth thing that I've figured out that affects my blood sugar. Like, never mind. I, how am I going to balance my insulin differently because I didn't get good sleep? Like, oh, like it's, it's crazy. So it's, they start simple uh, with the diabetes um, education and they need to, because they need to understand the carb counting. They need to understand how they're going to, how they're going to treat their condition with, uh, with their insulin. But, uh, once you get your, once, once they get their, their, a grasp of the basics, keep on going. Cause there is a lot more out there. Thank Amazing. you so much for that. Cause the other thing is just really, really quickly is that, like you said in the beginning, everybody's different. Every body's different. So you're probably mm-hmm. all going to react a little bit differently. So it's mm-hmm. not just a one size fits all. So it's going to, yeah. it's a journey, but there's people out there that are willing to be on that journey with you and are yeah as such as yourself and that's just awesome it's great so yeah yeah so that i cannot believe what time it is yeah. i know hero actually has something to do believe it or not tonight <laughs> well thank you for i know this isn't your normal time and oh so thank you so much for for oh. changing it for me it was our pleasure our pleasure i mean i'm really busy lately like really busy I mean, like, it's, it's painstaking how busy I am. So yeah. I'm really glad that we could accommodate this. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> nothing! <laughs> oh. Thank you so much, Matt, for oh, it was a pleasure conversation. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Awesome. Absolutely. And uh, once I edit this bad boy, I'll let you know. And then... Sounds good. Yeah. So thank you so much, Matt. Take good care. My pleasure. You're going to edit out that thing, that question, aren't you? Uh, the one that I asked? <laughs> <laughs> or kind of didn't ask. It sort of just kept yeah. on going. <laughs> but now we're going to have to edit this out. <laughs> oh, no, no. Anyway. I'm joking. And uh, no, it was, it was, it's been such a pleasure. So thank you so much for having me and inviting me in the first place. I was so honored that you oh. even would consider me uh a worthwhile guest on your show i honestly absolutely absolutely you have a lot of wisdom and a lot of life experiences to share with the greater communities and if we can be a part of that conversation i think that's really important wonderful and you're doing some pretty good stuff that needs needs light needs light and attention so yeah you need to do that take good care i will me i will thank you i will absolutely Okay. And I will hopefully see you guys soon. I would love that. Maybe well, in person. You'll be able to see me. I just live downtown in Vancouver, so I'm a little bit closer. So anytime yes. you're in the area or want to connect, I'm, I'm always here. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Care, okay. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye.